Afternoon, y'all. David Atkins, Target Individual. Um, today, I want to talk about something important. Uh, there's been people saying, oh, I watched your video, and uh, you said this, and you said that, and it triggered me. Well, of course, there's things that's going to trigger you. Um, smiley faces used to trigger me. I'm getting better at ignoring it because every time they would swarm me with gang stalkers, I'd get all these text messages with just smiley faces on it. So anytime somebody, even one of my friends, would send me a smiley face in with a text, I would be like, man, that's a perp. I know it's a perp. How could my friend do me like that? You know what I'm saying? But uh, I had to realize that, hey, every smiley face isn't perp action. And I'm going to explain how this works. It's called sensitivity, classical conditioning, whatever you want to talk, neuro linguistic programming, whatever you want to call them. We'll give a couple examples and give a, go in depth into definition of this because this is somebody said, oh, you said shark in one of your videos. It was a trigger to me. Okay, but I did not trigger you intentionally. You see what I'm saying? Uh, the word shark was what I used to refer to my friends at the Walmart parking lot circling me. They were circling me like a shark with his prey. Now, I said that pertaining just to what was going on with me. Now, the person who said they tr I triggered them has been so conditioned to something doing to do with sharks that it triggers that person. You see what I'm saying? So it's very important as a TI to recognize your trigger and try to read in between the lines and whether when or not whether or not it's perp or it's a trigger. For instance, if I'm the cough in this video, it's just because I got a cough. It's not to do any perp things. It's just to clear my throat or cough, which usually now. If I have to cough in a video, I'll restart my video because people are so sensitive, stuff like that. Some of the sensitivity tactics used by these groups are borderline subliminal tactics designed to create phobias. They are apparently based on neuro-linguistic programming. You can think of NLP as a very powerful tool that can be used to produce rapid, profound change. The parts of neuro-linguistic programming that these citizens are directed to use in anchors and triggers. The goal of these sensitivity programs is to condition people with damaging emotions which are linked to triggers such as objects, colors, movements, and sounds. Once this is done, a target can be covertly injured openly in public. This may happen with or without the target's conscious awareness. As I'll demonstrate, this can be brutal. There's a basic protocol that the perpetrators begin with. The TI contributes to the modification, explained McKinney. She described a Polovian conditioning program that's used to get targeted people to respond to triggers which are continually built into the protocol. It's an ongoing process, she explains. These conditioning techniques, says Moret, are used during group stalking to make the TI experience perpetual negative emotions. Self-help gurus use these methods to create positive emotional states and anchor them to movements, sounds, objects, which become the triggers that will invoke the emotion. Although this sounds complex, it's pretty simple in practice. It's done by creating a peak emotional state and then anchoring it by doing something repeatedly, which effectively anchors the emotion to whatever was done. A stimulus which is linked to and triggers a psychological state is called an anchor in neurolinguistic programming, stated Joseph O'Connor and John Seymour in their book, Introducing NLP. They explain anchors can be set in a single instance if the emotion is strong and timing is right. We're unconsciously creating anchors in our environment all the time with people, music, places, and objects. The conditioning techniques used by this global stalking network were obviously designed by people knowledgeable in the behavioral sciences. These civilian swarmers are used to create negative emotional states in targeted people such as fear and anxiety and anchor them to common objects. This is the deliberate creation of a phobia. Organizations known to have researched NLP or neuro-linguistic programming include military intelligence agencies. CIA, FBI, State of Bureau Investigation. In the structure chapter, I'll provide evidence that John B. Alexander and Miss Janet Morris have contributed to creation of this program on behalf of financial elite. Anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. Uh, anchoring stated Morris and Alexander is based on a neurophysical assumption that the pattern of behavior can be installed, then reactivated whenever a similar situation is encountered or created. Knowing this, you can intentionally install anchors to return your target to specific emotional states. There's been some concern in the mental health field over the potential misuse of NLP. Unfortunately, like other tools, they can be just misused in the wrong hands. O'Connor and Seymour similarly, similarly caution these stimuli can be misused to trigger very potent and very negative emotional states. This is in the realm of phobias. Put simply, NLP is being infused to inflict emotional injuries. 
The deliberate infliction of emotional pain is an act of violence. The use of NLP in this manner is similar to a physical attack, such as a punch or kick, only it leaves no visible injury. Targets are constantly monitored, says McKinney, and if a target responds emotionally to a potential particular trigger, that will be built into the protocol. For instance, to transfer a negative emotion to a color or object, they may have multitudes of citizens wearing the same color or carrying a similar object, swarm you, during which time you may be attacked with direct energy and noise. Targets around the world have been reported to sensitize sounds, gestures, cell phones, laptops, pens, cars, watches, clothing, symbols, colors, and other items. This type of attack does require some maintenance and will lose its potency unless it's reinforced. There are many other attacks NLP can be used for. This can include a recent traumatizing event which may have been facilitated by a faction in this network. For example, an accidental death of a family member or pet or some type of brutal assault that's been linked to a trigger. Then shortly afterwards, you may be group stalked by people who project that trigger, which is tended to arouse the emotional pain you suffered during that experience. In NLP, the process of copying an emotional state from an existing trigger to a new trigger is called chaining. Groups will take an object you've been sensitized to and link it to another object. The idea is to keep expanding the amount of object that you associate fear, anxiety, anger, sadness, or shame with. For instance, one of your neighbors has made it clear they're attacking you. Now you know they are, and they know you know. So they may use be, be used in an attempt to sensitize you to another stimulus, such as a car alarm. Because you've already associated them with pain, they can extend their harassment to a sound turning their car alarm on and off in rapid succession over a short period, multiple times throughout the day. After they've done this for a couple of days, you'll be sensitized to that sound, and they can occasionally use it to inflict pain. Even though it's only done a couple of times, you know why they're doing it, and you may feel negative emotions. You may also feel frustrated at the prospect of trying to explain this harassment to another individual. And because they have not had your experience with that sound and aren't aware of, that is a small part part of a much larger harassment program. It may be difficult to explain that those beeps were attacks. After a person has been sensitized to a color or object, the article can become a unification symbol for the group, much like a uniform. For instance, after a person has been sensitized to a color red, he's surrounded by people wearing red clothes in public. Furthermore, this is an adaptable uniform because it can be changed almost immediately. If a person who realized they are being gang stalked has been sensitized to red, then the organizers of network can simply have them blitzed by a whole horde of citizens wearing blue clothes. The harassment's now been chained to this color. Most likely, these, these uniforms also promote cohesiveness and may foster temporary feelings of power among the civilian stalkers. And I'm going to read this real quick, too. Getting a target sensitized to an everyday stimuli, a target individual over months or years is negatively sensitized to everyday stimuli in which is used to harass them. So, for instance, my smiley faces, I'm getting swarmed, I'm getting death threats, I'm getting um, chased around. I don't understand what gang stalking is yet. Or even if I do, I'm getting swarmed, chased around, all that. And all these people keep sending me smiley faces on my phone. Nothing but smiley why I'm getting swarmed. So every time anybody responds to a text message or a comment with a smiley face, I'm back in that panic and fear. I'm getting swarmed. It's the people that swarmed me that time. They're sending smiley You see what I'm saying? So don't take everything that you hear in my videos, me saying shark is uh, a trigger. You cannot say I triggered you because I didn't trigger you. I had no intention of triggering you. But the negative stimuli that you've been sensitized to triggered you. And I hope this helped people understand what sensitizing is. So my advice to you is learn what your triggers are and learn how to read through them because you can get it wrong. It can be an innocent person and you think it's for somebody trying to trigger you. God bless the TI community and every TI out there.